another day, another dollar. Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back to another Watch and Talk here at um, Automotive Anatomy. I hope everybody's doing well at the time of uh, you listening to this, wherever you're at, the car, taking a shower, or just, I don't know, in your front of your computer. <laughs> I don't know, we watch stuff at weird times, so maybe in the restroom. I know a lot of you are playing in the restroom right now, which is really weird. <laughs> I hope my company makes you feel better. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, first watch and talk uh, with Jackie in a long time. And um, uh, first of all, FM Spec, uh, our buddy Francisco, did wash the car and give a nice little polish. And so you could definitely see the difference in the headlights. And um, the car was extremely clean when he he provided it for me. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, it got really dusty uh, here where I live. And and so obviously. It was time for another watch and talk and, and just to uh, get her ready for the weekend festivities. And I drove her, man. I drove her on Sunday. At the time of this recording, it's Monday. So on Sunday, I drove to meet George to interview him on his beautiful EK in downtown LA. By downtown LA. It's called the Art uh, District. And then from there, um, I drove up to Pasadena, which is like 20 minutes away, for some car meet. Uh, Genesis Honda Acura uh, dealership. Uh, was hosting a small meet and so I, I wanted to just go and stop by and see what it was all about and it was cool It was a cool little time saw, uh, new subscribers and uh, Saw some old faces and it was nice and then from there uh, on my way home um, the the Once a month meet for the EFs in Santa Ana was going on the same day and I kind of ran about my wife I'm like should I go should I not go and she's like just go I mean You know if you don't if you don't you know Worst case scenario is you get there, no one's there. It's only 50 minutes away from the house. So I was like, ah, let's go. I was a little tired too. But uh, I ended up making it out there. I made, made it to the EF meet. It was cool. Uh, I saw a lot of friendly faces, um, familiar faces. Met a few uh, new people. Pretty cool just to see them. Um, being able to be out, you know, being happy that there's meets. And hopefully the EF meet uh, continues to be once a month and continues to be consistent. But I know with this whole COVID thing, some people are still iffy about it. But I, I think for the most part, I already kept safe, and and uh, it was a cool time. And so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Uh, driving her, enjoying her the way it should be. Uh, she's not fast by any means, but um, she definitely feels like a whole new car. And then uh, Rosie, the daily, she's still, she's not much of a daily at the moment, but I am driving her. Uh, that car I drove the, the Friday the Saturday we drove far we drove to you know Griffith Park which is you know up in LA and then went to Long Beach to some coffee spot and um, yeah it's kind of alternating which is cool you know it, it's different not difficult um, but it is different sensation of driving the cars and so I had to drive them differently um, but yeah I mean like I said that car uh, was dusty from certain areas the wheels and the tires were decently but uh just want to do this watch and talk and um, the topic that I wanted to discuss today was uh, how far are I, 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 in this example that I'm going to provide it was parents it was parents that were trying to I don't know if it's provide a better future or to brag to their friends um, about the, their kids accomplishments and what do I mean by that what I mean by that is uh, on Netflix there's a documentary called The College Scandal. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, um, but a few high profile celebrity people, whatever, got caught that they were cheating. They they, uh, they got the services from uh, this this gentleman who was doing quote unquote the side door method um, to get their kids into top universities like USC, UCLA, Stanford, you know, Harvard, blah, blah, blah. Um, You'll notice here that I'm whistling to Chubbs uh, a couple times, and the reason is because we had an issue with um, the neighbor's dog. It's a big ass dog. Uh, kept jumping the fence or whatever it was doing, and it was just it kept coming to the backyard in the front of the house. So it's almost like he's looking for Chubbs, and it's a big dog. It's not a small dog, so um, I kept on the lookout the whole entire time. Um, it hasn't. I haven't seen it gone anywhere anymore. But still, it's kind of scary. See, so, as you can tell me, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm like panicked out. I'm like, man, where's where's Chubbs? But anyways, uh, so the, the the college candle, that's where it is. Some of you guys may or may not know, uh, I, I work in education. And so my job is to make sure that the students that I work with not only um, are on the right track to be able to be eligible to uh, 
apply to a four year university or a community college, um, but also ensure that uh, we can put them in the best place possible for them to be able to attend. And ultimately, for me, uh, on a personal level, is for me to get their education. I, I can give uh, you know two two uh, shits about <laughs> uh, what university they go and how prestigious the school is. To me, I think is it's make believe, and I know it's kind of hard from an you know, educator point of view. But I just don't believe in getting to this whole amount of debt uh, to go to university to be able to say, oh, I graduated from USC. Uh, at the end of the day, especially depending on the degree that you go get, um, there's going to be a, a, a bracket that you're really going to fall on uh, that you're going to get paid, you know, that amount of money, regardless if you went to a Cal State or, a, or, or at least here in California, a Cal State, a UC or even a private. Um, I would argue that some of the people that did not go to college, um, and they create their own businesses or provide some type of service, actually make more money than some that went to college and have a, a credential and a degree. Either way, whatever plan you, you choose to follow, it's whatever I hope is appropriate for you. Uh, but the whole idea was that we were looking at this documentary where these people were paying um, $500,000, you know, uh, close to a million dollars to get their kids into these top universities. And the way this gentleman was going about it is, to give you guys a little bit of background, um, there's certain specific uh, areas and classes that students have to take in high school, and they have to pay, you know, have to pass the C or better, and that's how they, you know, apply to universities, and then hopefully they get in. If not, the higher universities have like a, a, a stupid rate that they always like to brag about, um, close to five to fifteen percent acceptance rate. That means that you know, if a hundred people uh, you know, if a thousand people apply, I mean, you're looking at about maybe lucky, you know, a hundred getting in. Um, some, something, uh, something absurd uh, along those lines. However, uh, within that percentage, there's a big chunk of kids that get in via, um, you know, money that parents, you know, old money, people that have a lot of. Uh, donations into the school or uh, you can have the you don't necessarily have to have the best grades but you can catch a ball you can throw a ball you're a great athlete you're somehow going to get in and you're somehow going to get athletic scholarship so what these uh, uh, celebrities were doing were working with this gentleman who was doing um, and so that's called the back door by the way the back door is uh, families that give donations to programs uh, for the school and and then magically their kids get in you know you wonder why well yeah they put in a lot of money to the school so you don't want to let go of this kid and they know that the kid's not the smartest you know they just whatever you know it's it's a business you know, at the end of the day which is sad but that's what education has come down to at least here in the united states i don't know about other other places of the world and then uh you have the front door which is normal you you get in for on your own merit you applied uh, no you didn't give no donations uh, you, you, you showed, you know, that you were able to do well in the SAT, it's uh, testing that they do, um, you have the grades, you just quote unquote normal person, you know. And then the side door, which was this gentleman's way of doing it, which was he was get, uh, getting these kids who obviously did not qualify for the school on their own merit, but um, the parents were, one, giving a, a huge chunk of donations to athletic programs, and he chose these programs like um sailing and water polo some sports that are not mainstream like soccer and football and baseball just because those are under a lot of you know eyes you know a football a football team like let's say usc um a football team at usc i'm gonna guesstimate and say at least 40 percent of them are gonna have some uh eyes on them to go professional like it's just that competitive so you can't sneak in a kid that has never played football and try to get him uh you know try to fool people and say that he got accepted to usc via his or her uh, i guess it would be his um football skills and so in essence that's what he was doing you know for these other universities he got kids that uh, had never played water polo and somehow they got in through the water polo team so that so I mean yes it was a chain it was a, a university in it you know the athletic directors of the universities were in it coaches were in it so it wasn't a one man you know show it wasn't a one person can do it all no I mean he also got uh, this other thing uh, that you may or, or may not be aware is called the SAT it's a test and that test really just says how well of a student he or she will be their first year of college uh, since they have, you know, most of these kids, that's going to be their, their incoming freshmen that don't have any college transcripts. And 
you know, there was a lot of shadiness with the person who was doing the, you know, reading the direction, which is called the proctor. The proctor, um, you know, was in essence taking the test for the kids, and it, it, it's it's definitely a, a, a documentary I would recommend. Uh, it's on Netflix, and again, it's called The College Scandal. And, and for me, like I said, as an educator and working closely with students, uh, that's something that I've always told students. Like, to me, it wasn't, uh, it was new in the sense of like oh okay that's how he got around it i wasn't sure how he got around it because i i've no, i've known about donations i've known the fact that people pay heavy money and i always make a joke like that with my students i'm like hey you know what just letting you know like yes you're trying to go to ucla you're trying to go to usc you're trying to go to stanford but you're going to be sitting next to a student who's um you know, last name is the same one as the building you're sitting on, and you're gonna wonder why. Well, because their grandparents, you know, you know, were were old students, old workers, and now they spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to that school, and that kid was pretty much guaranteed a spot, whether he or she truly deserved it or not. Uh, but it's because, yeah, like they they put a lot of money to the school, and so when you look at it from a business perspective. Uh, you're not gonna say no to the family that gives you a lot of money like it's just that's not gonna be the case and so you have private schools like USC that uh, they rely a lot on kids that are from out of the country out of the state because then you charge them close to double and you know like, like I always like to tell people we're not all broke there's some people that have hefty money that can definitely just put it down they don't care and obviously with this documentary we were able to you know I, I was speaking with my wife about I wasn't really surprised about the celebrities that came on TV that you know were caught in this scandal uh, because we know them you know yeah they make money but it was all the other people that we didn't know who they were we didn't know what they did but they had chunks and chunks of money to throw away uh, and I say throw away just because it's not really in my personal opinion like what are you really teaching the kids um, that money really you know can get you anything which is true sadly but um on top of that is like as a as a human being um as a teenager some of them knew you know some of them knew what their parents were doing and how they got into these universities uh, to me on a personal level it's just like what kind of sense of accomplishment are you really teaching the kids like and it's not that they care i mean no one <laughs> there's not a, a son or a daughter of a, of a billionaire uh, who's sitting there and thinking, oh man, Automotive Anatomy mentioned me on, on his watch and talk and I feel bad for my actions. No, they, nobody gives a rat's ass, you know. They're, they're going to go buy a new Bentley and they're going to go and, and go travel the world because that's all they've been taught. And that's just, you know, uh, either old money or the, the merits of their parents and, you know, they, they've, they've been managed to have this lifestyle. I just thought it was very interesting, um, and the reason why is because some some would argue, well, you know, what is it to you? You know, why? What does it bother you, or it doesn't bother you that um, these parents spend that much money? If they have the money, then yeah, they should be able to do this, and you know, now we cheat the system. Well, on a personal level, I really don't care that these kids were getting into these, you know, universities, and um, you know, parents were making so, you know, putting so much money. I think what I care the most is with the illusion that they create out of that and what do i mean by that i mean like uh i think one of the i don't know her pepper for whatever i remember <laughs> i can't remember her name lauren laughlin or whatever her name is from from full house uh her daughter one of them uh, wouldn't even go to class she was you know starting a youtube channel she started a youtube channel million subscribers had already like a makeup brand and things of that nature so she was like a kylie jenner like but why would the parents want her to go to USC? Like it doesn't make sense. Like you would think that she would want to go a different path. She she obviously didn't like school. That's what she would say. And so, for me, you know, when she would brag about being in USC, I was like, you must know, like you didn't get in by your merit. But to a lot of followers of hers, and to a lot of people, especially high school kids, they see that and they're like, oh my gosh, I want to be able to be, you know, her, I want to be able to go to USC, everybody has, you know, the movies, the college movies, it's party everything and, you know, uh, Thirsty Tuesdays and they go out to drink and, you know, it's, it's, they feel that college is um, a once in a life experience that has to be, you know, lived like that, you know, you have to be part of a frap or a sorority and you have to be able to enjoy those things and go to the football games and the rivalry against UCLA and blah 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 the reality is a lot of people don't have that type of money and 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 that's kind of the sad part it goes back to the whole social media you know especially in the car world um, 
there's some people that are spending left and right every single day. Every single day they have a new build. Every single day they buy new wheels. And some of us are sitting like, damn, I gotta pay rent before I I, I spend money on wheels, you know. But a little bit of <laughs> a little bit inside us is like, damn, I wish I could ball out like that sometimes. But then once we really get to know their situation, you we would really, you know. Uh, find out like well yeah they bought three sets of wheels that month but they also had to ask their mom for for rent and then you're like oh okay maybe that's why um and in some cases um they don't have any bills and so all the money goes to car parts and in some other cases they don't even have a job so they just get the money from their parents or from whoever and that's why they're able to build you know sick ass cars at, at such a young age and that's why they they don't go and buy a, a honda you know they, they go buy an m3 or a porsche at 19 20 years old and they're flashing and that's what social media celebrates and that's what they like and so i want to bring this topic just to to kind of discuss again the the irony of trying to teach education or, or put a student in education by teach by, by cheating <laughs> your way into it it's, it's just ironic because you know for for sure that the kid's gonna get in and then you're gonna have to pump more money to their school for your kid to be able to graduate because they're not gonna you know they don't have uh, the ethic to to uh to finish and, and reality i mean the ethic they don't really care because they they know they're settled they're 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 set for the rest of their life some in some other areas and and that's kind of like you know it, it's funny and it's not but that's the way reality works and then at the end of the documentary it shows all the different quote-unquote sentences air quotes because you know it makes me laugh all the quote-unquote uh, sentences that they got out of what to me is considered a huge crime I mean we're talking about over half a million dollars in some cases some cases close to a million um, fraud you know bribery I mean this is so much stuff and some of them we got like a month you know two months three months in prison and whatever their prison definition of prison for them is probably like an isolated room with AC and you know room service uh, again because money does sadly buy you uh, everything it reminds me of that gentleman who was caught in that video that crashed that exotic car and then he didn't you know he he walked away I mean he well he tried getting away on the video and then um, uh, my buddy uh, my buddy told me that he was the son of this billionaire Chinese in, uh, you know individual and so this was just that didn't even do time type of thing you know uh, well, as of the rest of us we you know god forbid we do something like that holy crap you know you're looking at at months at months before they even look at your case and then years you know they'll give you years behind for endangering and they add on all these different type of um, you know things that you did and, and so it, it, it's interesting I mean to me again um, ironically I work in education at one point when I was younger I, I really like wow you know USC UCLA I, w I wish I could attend those schools um, as I got older now I, I don't really don't care I definitely do make sure that I don't impose my own beliefs on students um, I provide all the information the good the bad the ugly that I feel is my job and then it's up to them and their families to make decisions um, yeah there's been times that I disagree with some students and some of the students have disagreed with me and all I said is hey you know I provided you with the options go ahead and make the decisions that you want um, and, and I'm honest I say hey you know you're you're telling me that you're struggling financially um, you're gonna be sitting in UCLA with someone who's you know very well known in the campus because of their parents or their uncles or whoever and they don't have to worry about a budget they don't have to worry about anything that's their job their job is to say that they're UCLA you know uh, students or whatever the case may be um, their job is to just go get that degree so then they can quote unquote uh, have it and then they'll take over their family business that may that will start them uh, start them off at two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year <laughs> you know while well, you're here trying to change the world as a social worker or or a math teacher or you know first generation business person whatever the case may be and not that there's anything wrong with education i just feel like it it has gotten to the point where school is super expensive and it's a popularity content contest and and it's driving people especially of wealth um to go through these loopholes and continue to I guess have a, a gap 
in the system you know there's a lot of services and resources for students that come from financial hardships just like I did that's how I know and I used them to the best of my ability um, I I didn't get financial aid uh, my wife did we pay that back a hundred percent um, I don't I personally don't believe in the whole you know keep the keep the, the payment till forever or the that that relief program just because you borrow the money like <laughs> you chose to go to a specific school you chose to have a specific um, sweater with a specific logo then you need to pay whatever they're asking if you don't like what they're asking or you have no intentions of paying it back that you probably shouldn't get it but that's not the way most of us think you know and that's okay um, I guess that's what allows me to go to sleep you know calm and and knowing that I I we paid off everything that we owed at one point um, and we're doing so much better and we're making sure that our future generations uh, benefit and and maybe um, you know I I'll never go out of my way to give a school I, I can't imagine having that much money <laughs> uh, and giving a school money to have my kid get in like I'd rather just tell him hey I'm gonna invest this two hundred thousand dollars into you building a brand before I say I'm gonna give two hundred thousand dollars to get you to Stanford like that to me is just it's crazy but I guess you know I, I've never had that much money that I, I wouldn't know what to do with it you know um, and we said we wouldn't but then when you're in that situation then things change and 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 it's easy to 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 do you know certain things that you you wouldn't do or you wouldn't ever think of doing you know when you were in that position but what do you guys think about all of this man like i said i would definitely suggest you guys check it out um the college scandal on netflix uh it's only like a 45 minute documentary i believe uh but it gives you a lot of insight on on the college process and 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 again as an educator i i work closely with students and and right now as, as i'm speaking it's when everybody's getting their accept acceptance letters or deny you know rejection letters um via mail or email and it, it's 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 difficult to tell an 18 year old like hey the the world's not over if you know you see uh, San Diego didn't accept you you know it, it's difficult to tell that to a kid and but in their world you know they they have other kids their age who are getting into these top universities and that's not they don't deserve it or whatever the case may be um, but it gives you that sense of missing out it gives you that sense of like well what did I do wrong and and it's like no you didn't do anything wrong it's just the universities have their own little quota they have their own little plans they have their own little algorithm and they wanna it's it's a game for them a slash business and so sadly you're you're their, the the ones that keep them alive and and they can deny a hundred of you guys because guess what a thousand of you guys are gonna be applying to the school and it sucks it sucks that that's the system that we have but that's what we have and so I think from my end and, and from all of you guys you know some of you guys are parents and uncles and things of that nature it's important to motivate students it's important to motivate you know your kids your your nephews but remind them that it's okay if you don't get to these top schools um, once you do your research you realize like a degree is a degree whether it's from Cal State Fullerton where I graduated from or from UC San Diego and so once you graduate all they do is give you this little diploma they shake your hand they say hey good job buddy now go and find a job yourself um, or, or sometimes you know not even acknowledging the fact that you're right after high school you're only just getting a bachelor's degree you're still gonna have to get a you know nowadays you're probably gonna have to get a master's degree you know grad school um, to be able to do the job that you know you want to do and that I'm not even getting into the point of the fact that people are going to college and not knowing what they want to do and they they get a degree and they don't they don't they're not able to get the job that they went to school for. I mean, it's it's a lot, right? And then having the big bill to pay, and having to uh, to be with that, um, you know, uh, debt payment for the next thirty plus years, almost like a mortgage. It's insane. Um, and I, and again, it, it brings me back to the fact that if you go to a bank today and you say, "Hey, I want two hundred fifty thousand dollars." to start a business they'll ask you for a credit score they'll ask you for you know pay stubs they'll ask you for a million and one things but sadly for or 17 18 year olds who are coming out of high school they there's no boundaries it's like sure you want to go to UCLA go ahead let's get you a hundred thousand dollars into debt it's for education it's 
it's an investment on yourself and I just laugh every time you know educators my fellow educators say that to to students um, because the reality is that most of us are not sharing truly the way we feel and the way a lot of us uh, feel is damn you know I wish I could you know change my job but I have too many bills or I have these student loans or etc or I wish I would have done things different I wouldn't have gone to a, such an expensive school and sure a lot of people say you know I wouldn't change the experience that I had well then how come you're always complaining about your student loans how come you're always trying to get into you know student you know relief programs again that's just what I've experienced not trying to be extremely negative not trying to say that I'm a thousand percent right because I'm not and we both you know we all know that um, but I just wanted to bring this conversation to light with you guys I wanted to just share what I was thinking um, I thought that it was important um, that all of us understand that we all have different walks you know pathways in life and that not one specific way is a thousand percent right and um, but the fact that all of us um, we're, we're striving to do the best we can and just understand that just because people are posting on social media that they're achieving and that they're doing amazing you don't know their life circumstances don't compare yourself to them and ultimately you know do it the, do things the right way it always works out that is all for this watch and talk i really appreciate you guys so much love you guys and as always we go for the car we stay for the person much love